Hi, and welcome to another episode of The Corporate Show with myself, with uh, Manjeet Nijam. Today, I've got two a wonderful guests with me, uh, Shane and David, and we're actually going to discuss about the training industry in the way it was before lockdown and how it's transposed and adapted itself during lockdown. So just a little bit of insight as to how we've had to adapt as trainers and where this is going maybe in the future. So welcome to both of you. Shane, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Hi Manjeet, thanks for having me. Yeah, um, so my background is then that I've been working in IT for 15 or so years now. Uh, and in that time, I, I recognise we, we had a little chat yesterday about all of this and we talked about how kind of it's become more specialised. Well, I was a kind of a classic IT manager that actually was better suited to kind of delivering projects. Mm. Um, and although I worked as a kind of service, uh, service delivery manager for the, for the UK and I looked after around about kind of 1,500 clients or so, um, generally I, th I think my strengths were in projects. So now I've moved on to kind of project management and implementation of best practice mm -hmm. training. Uh, and I deliver around the subjects of PMP, AMP, mm -hmm. uh, APM uh, and Prince too. Okay, that's brilliant. Um, so in the coming weeks, because you very kindly um, said you'll come along for another one of these talks and we can discuss your own speciality, which is around the PMP. So for those of you wondering what PMP is, you'll have to tune into the coming episodes to find out exactly. what Shane's speciality is all about. Fantastic. David, a little bit about yourself, please. Yeah, nice to be here. So I specialize in change strategy. Uh, I do training and consultancy. So I've worked with you two fabulous people. Um, so yeah, change strategy, managing benefits, implementation of standards, because I truly believe if companies increase the knowledge of their employees, they increase the performance aspects by applying the right standards, mm -hmm. then businesses can do better. And to in order to do that it takes adaptability and change so i also specialize in lots of different agile methodologies so of course you can tell american accent so um, yeah that's that's me in a nutshell fantastic and again we'll talk to you in the coming weeks and i think your main spe speciality is around change transformation change enablement that kind of area so we'll again you know for those viewers you need to come back and keep watching to find out what these gentlemen are actually all about um, and how they can actually help you and your organisations to move forward. So the, the topic for today, like I said, it's around where we were prior to the 23rd of March and what we're doing now. So, I mean, how has it impacted you guys as, as trainers? Because like myself, you're used to being in a classroom full of people. All of a sudden there's this massive switch i'm going to come to shane first because i know david you have a, um, a slightly different experience in this because of your background okay so um shane can you just how is it impacting you what's it done for you um that's a really good question manji i think um the, the predominant difficulty is i'm much much as the same as yourself i am generally used to face-to-face -to -face delivery where i would go to a venue and and promote the ways that we have two people i would talk to people and enable that discussion and we, we talk about the kind of the circle of communication and and, and how communication is is best delivered and um it, for me what I'm, I'm finding is kind of is currently lacking what we're having to work around is is missing that that body language mm. you know being able to react to people's faces you know watching the light bulb go up go on those kind of moments are are currently missing so it's um, now, having said that, kind of virtual technologies have been there for some time. It's just generally, it's only in the last six months or so I'm, that I've started to kind of move towards those. So it's it's getting used to now and trying to implement tactics to enable um, yeah. a, a more well-rounded communication, you know, across a, a virtual technology platform. Yeah, because from my own perspective, when I first started delivering training, oh my God, what, eight odd years ago? Um, which is when I first kind of like met you in those first initial years of, of right. delivering training because I think we all ended up working for the same training organization at the time mm. um, so my own experience initially was very much going to a classroom going to a client site delivering the training um, but then over the years since I've become my own entity under GMS training and consulting limited since I'm doing working for myself 
So I'm working with a lot more different training companies and it, the blended learning has come forward in the last yes. couple of years more so. So you'd have, for argument's sake, 15, 16 people in a room, maybe even 20 in a room, and then four, five, even 10 people doing um, remote learning. So they're, they're live, but they're just not in the room in front of me. So I'm used to that blended option, but then all of a sudden it's like somebody pulled the rug out from under us. It's like, no, you're not doing any of that anymore. And now it's 100% live training as, as we are doing now, which is tied, which actually brings me nicely to you, David, as in the sense that you've got a different experience to myself and um, Shane in all of this. Can you tell us a little bit about that? <clears throat> yeah, I think the difference being is, so uh, back in the US, um, and uh, of course you got to think about methodologies like agile and ways of working. So in order to be able to work across you know, multiple time zones, <clears throat> the digital technology they utilize to manage projects, but they use it exactly what we're doing now, face to face, but it's not being in the same room. What I've noticed was, and, and like yourself, you know, we work for lots of different training organizations and, you know, come March, there was this big scramble around getting virtual and getting virtual. We're going to go virtual. And what's interesting is the blended classrooms, like you said, there's, you're in front of people, but then there's a webcam. What I find different about it is when you're dealing with people, especially in the States, I mean, I did a course a few weeks ago. And everybody wanted their webcam on, just like here. Everybody wants to be live. So it's not virtual where you're just seeing slides in front of you. It's live where we can talk face to face. Now, actually, if we did that appropriately, there really isn't that big difference. And it means that every, anybody can uh, tune in live from their home, their office, a uh, big classroom if they wanted to be. But you still have that, you know, oh, look over Shane, light bulb moment went off. Look at Manjeet, she yeah. looks confused, you know. Mm. So I think because the UK and the size of the UK, I live right in the middle. So I could get to Scotland in three and a half hours. I could get to the south in three and a half hours. I'm, I'm somewhere right in the middle. So realistically, it's not like going from Kansas to New York. Yeah. But I think with what we've had now moving forward, that live training, if it's actually done appropriately, is just as engaging as being in a classroom. But you'll have more webcams open, which means that we will need to make sure we have the right technology to be able to compensate. But yeah. I also think that's going to have a massive cost, uh, well, benefit for organizations. <clears throat> I believe we were talking about if employees are more remote working, there's less need for office space. Absolutely, yeah, and that that is so true. The way things are moving forward, so it's so where where do you take the training? How is that going to be going forward once we get this gradual release out of the the lockdown period that we're in? Yeah. I don't actually like the word lockdown because we're not actually locked down. We're just not going out as often. No, just spending more time at home. And Absolutely. You yeah. know, I think that's also going to have a cost implication. You know, extending beyond that is a lot of companies went into the we're in a crisis, don't spend money on training. But actually right now is probably, it's not a sales pitch. If you've got employees that are sat at home, you know, you want to motivate them, you want to give them something to do, right? Mm -hmm. It's like all of us are attending a course next week. We've got a week, we're attending a course. Why? Because we can. And it's a perfect time because when, when time. all of this is actually over and you want employees going 110% to get everything back up and running, they're mm -hmm. not going to have time all the time to do the training aspect yeah. so now's an appropriate time but i think it's also going to have a positive cost implication so why send your employees a hotel for five days you know flights or anything when mm -hmm. actually they could just do it live from their house or mm -hmm. live from the office so if you've got yeah. a five-day training event and that that actually leads <laughs> makes me smile because i'm sure you guys have come across as well maybe you as well shane you know especially in the last few weeks when we've gone to the live training it's it's really interesting that all of a sudden um, the the delegates, the clients that are actually on the other end of this camera, they have now have new co-workers. So you'll get the odd head popping around the door of the other half. Maybe you know, it's, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realise you're on training, or a child coming, Dad, Mom, can you help me with my homework? So how are you dealing with with that aspect of it, Shane? From the the distractions are different. <laughs> From yeah. what they um, use, because usually in the classroom the distraction is the mobile phone. Yeah. 
Yeah, or kind of a laptop and the kind of the person that won't turn their email off because they've got a big project coming up, yeah. something along those lines. Um, mm -hmm. The distractions now, to be honest, that's the kind of the biggest battle I'm currently facing is kind of with, with two fairly young kids. And now my wife and I are having to kind of homeschool with assistance from the kind of the local school. It, mm -hmm. it provides a challenge in a sense of now um, my kids might kind of run in and out of the room, which is, is another distraction. But again, I, we've been given lemons, let's make lemonade with this. You know, I think what that does is often it, it acts as a real icebreaker. So it gives us a chance to humanize ourselves and, and actually it acts as a kind of a, a, um, a kind of a, something that puts it, puts our arm around the kind of the training as a whole. It, it breaks those yeah. barriers down because it's, it's one thing to say, well, put your cameras on. The next thing is to kind of break down around that. And people are then a little bit concerned about, you know, well, um, I wish I tidied up the room beforehand. I don't want people to see that. And you can see I'm, I'm presenting from my daughter's old bedroom. Um, yeah. I've handily kind of covered over some screw marks with some photos and other bits. And just, again, we've got to try and make the most of it that we can. And I think to show that we're human, it, it will break those barriers down and just kind of make people recognize, well, look, if this person is human, they can do it. Why can't I? That's yeah, I mean, I've, I've had, um, where I've been delivering training, you know, in this new way of completely being live, this um, over the airwaves, so to speak. And um, last week, it was, it, we had quite a fun time because a couple of delegates had <clears throat> young children and they wanted to talk to mum or dad or mm. whoever. And I'm like, right, let them come in. Let, let them say hello to us. Let's all say hello to the children. And like, I agree with you. It doesn't make, it humanises the whole um, training delivery and an aspect of it because we've all got, you know, significant people in our lives who now we're all in one space with. My mother-in-law, bless her heart, I love my mother-in-law to this. Every now and again, she'll pop her head around the door. She'll go, oh, have you finished your meeting? I'm like, I'm still working, mum. She's like, oh, okay, then fine. And then off she pops kind of thing, you know? Yeah. Um, well, without it, we're just heads on a camera, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's, it's a three-dimensional element that kind of adds mm. to us as, as people and to the, to the delegates as, as people as well. So. Mm. David, what's your yeah, take on this? Basic. I know you've got um, I agree 100%. Well. I agree 100%. So my mom popped around earlier, and she did it yesterday when <clears throat> I was talking to somebody, and you could just see this head come around the corner. <laughs> and, I, and she goes, are you still talking to people? <laughs> and then she goes, oh, God, I don't have any makeup on. <laughs> Straight out, you know. <laughs> so, things like that. And, and it, it, it's like us laughing now. It breaks that up. You know, again, I still, I really get annoyed when I, I hear people say virtual training. I know we're all in agreement because virtual is, you know, slides on a screen. You can't see nobody. And this slide says blah, 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 blah. That, that's just, you know, it, it's just there. But when you have this in front of you and, you know, we're having a laugh, somebody might pop around the corner. I think it makes it more personally and it recreates that dynamics that would be in a classroom anyways. Mm. Um, you know, we, I think sometimes we have to go above and beyond to try to break up that atmosphere, like being in a classroom. Yeah. Whereas here it's naturally relaxing. Something silly might happen. Like my dog bark or dog, you know, you see this tail waggling over here. Yeah. So I find that, oh, sorry, go ahead. I, no, it, I just think it makes it 10 times better. Yeah, I, mean, I totally agree with you because for me personally, I put a post on my LinkedIn page um, in, you know, how COVID-19 um, virus has infected my, uh, sorry, infected my current operating system and I now need a new upgrade. Um, and because it just like dawned on me that how much we've had to adapt quite quickly into the new way of working. And some people, I'm, I'm one of them, and she didn't cope with it quite well. But you start to come out the other side, isn't it? and I absolutely love the way that I'm delivering training now. My commute has gone from an hour and a half to five minutes. I mean, how cool is that? That's the impact on me. So that means I'm more relaxed. And I find with the delegates, when they're coming online as well, they don't have that stress of having been on the tube, mm. you know, running around getting the kids ready, doing their lunches, um, going into the office first before coming on the training. It, it's had a a profound impact on their attention as well, on people's attention and how long they can actually pay attention for as well. It's completely changed things. I mean, what do you guys think? I agree. I agree a hundred percent. I'd I'd say I'd go further as well. And when you're in a home environment, you're relaxed, right? I mean, it's, it's your home environment. It's your natural mm. environment. So it, it suits you a little bit better. Again, it's, 
it's a unifier, isn't it? It breaks those yeah. barriers down. There's, I mean, you know, people are saying, well, when we go back to normal, you know, training will go back to being in the classrooms. I think some people are in for a bit of a shock. It, it's going to, it has changed and it will continue to change. There will be some training that will be in the classroom. There's some stuff that has to be in the classroom. Like if you think about the lean training, yeah, because that's a lot more hands-on, there's lots more practical stuff in that. But where there isn't the where there isn't the need for so much practical stuff with lots of different exercises and so on and so forth, where you want to be in the room with your delegates, with your clients, okay, that's slightly different. But a lot of training may well shift this way, the way that you know, the way that we've, we've changed to to delivering now. Yeah, I um I I think it's to be embraced. Certainly, yeah. I mean, I I don't see any reason why we have to go back to just kind of classroom style delivery. Mm. You know, we can work with a kind of a blended approach where we take people in a live environment or in a kind of a classroom based environment and, mm. and look to utilize both of those. Yeah. Um, again, it's about responding to the kind of the want of the customer. Exactly. But so, I also want to. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. Go for it. I was go just going to say, I also want to point out, though, you know, going back to my original conversation about utilizing this before to run programs or a portfolio or, mm -hmm. you know, agile. I think it also takes, because this is relatively, and I don't want to say new, mm. but the usage is new to yeah. our UK and European style markets, mm -hmm. that, and other countries have used this for, you know, religiously for much longer. I think it's also a skill in itself to be able to get used to this type of technology. So whereas somebody might be comfortable sitting in a classroom they might feel a bit uneasy being in front of a webcam. Mm. So, and I did, I have noticed that with live training is, you know, some people really feel a bit weird about having a webcam on, but mm. actually if they were in a the classroom, they'd be fine. Yeah. Um, and I, I, it was about a year and a half ago for a company, I did a live training session, but the, the person that was in the room, one of them didn't want the webcams on nothing, you know, they felt a bit uneasy. And I was fine with that, um, talking along, talking along. And then all of a sudden, I seen a little note pop up on the screen. And it says, hi, I'm back. Hi, I'm back. Um, where did you go? Oh, I went shopping. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Yeah. Don't you think you should have told me that three hours ago? Because I had done, had a three-hour session mm. with the break in between, come back, and I'm still talking. So I think I was probably more annoyed that I was talking to myself. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's getting people to realize that actually it is more relaxing. It's better if you need to stop real quick and run downstairs, get a glass of uh, water or tea. Just do this for a second, mute yourself, come back. Hi, sorry about that. Boom, you're there. Well, yeah, I mean, that, that, that's what the chat facilities are there for, isn't it? I think this, this goes back to something that we were discussing the other day between us all, and we highlight the, the kind of the importance of it is, is the soft skills that we have. Mm -hmm. So we need to be able to articulate that a little bit better. And, you know, um, when we want to come to talk about PMP, we do Manjit, we'll see that that's where they're currently kind of looking to place a, an emphasis on, yeah. moving to more of the kind of the agile style working. But I think equally some ground rules to kind of kick everything off, just to say mm -hmm. to everybody, look, here's the protocol, this is the way of working. I mean, it's, it's the same way that we handle it on a Monday morning, right? When we go into yeah. the classrooms, whether yeah. we do it kind of live, it, this is how we want it to play folks. You know, it's your okay. training. It's not ours. It's, it can Absolutely. be done. But I also think it, I think it verifies also something we've been talking about is after 2008, with all the stuff that we went through, I think with the companies that geared up to make everybody specialists and specialists, I think there is a massive lack of, and I don't know if you guys agree, but a massive lack of soft skills mm -hmm. in lots yes. of organizations. Yeah. And that's a, a topic for another day, uh, the soft skills. So we can pick up on that another time. So I just wanted to wrap it up there, but thank you both very much for your input. Thank you. Um, thoroughly enjoy chatting with you as always. It's always a pleasure talking to you guys. Um, and as for everybody else, thank you for tuning in. Make sure you look forward to the uh, next episode and um, we will see you then. Take care. Bye.